Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Inna alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nastahdiq Wa nastahdiq wa salim ala sirid wa mursalim Habibina shafirina maulana Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa ashabi Wa barak wa sallam wa tasliman kathiran kathira Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yaqul Inna allahu malalikati wa salluna ala al-nabi Ya ayu wa lathina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyiduna Muhammad Wa ala ala Sayyiduna wa Nabiyyina wa Mulana Muhammad Ya Rabbi Salim Assalamualaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I think we are all aware of the conditions throughout the world We are aware of the situations of people We know what's happening, we are seeing it, we are listening And all these aspects are going through our mind every day. But I think what is very important for us to know that the solution to every problem on earth starts from the self. We can talk about Palestine for the many, many hundred years we are talking. We spoke about Iraq, speaking about Syria, talking about Egypt. These type of activities will continue. All these happenings will continue, oppression, you know, the, the structure of the talk of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is absolutely true. And he has spoken about these things in the hadith, and that will happen. But that's all in place. That's all in place. The most important thing which I want to discuss today with is if we change ourselves, you know, if each one of us that's present here, including myself, if we change ourselves, and if we structure ourselves according to what Allah has planned as human being to be structured about, then peace starts from within the self. And from the little peace amongst ourselves, it spreads from heart to heart, people to people, societies, communities, and in the world. So that's what I want to discuss today. I want to share with you a few ideas and thoughts about this change that we should occur within ourselves. What happens is, we must start changing our way of thinking. You know, we have this certain pattern of thinking, the thought maybe, if I want to think of somebody, I just keep on thinking bad and bad and bad. We don't want to change it. We must be able to change our actions. We need to change our way of doing things. We need to start focusing on that which can change ourselves. I can go on on many, many, many kind of relations and hadith, etc. But we're just going to go on a very, very general discussion so that you and I can be part. We can understand each other. We can understand each other. We can find our feet today and we can walk towards the path of goodness. That's what we have to do. And if that occurs, each one of us will have a wonderful life. You know, we all want peace. We want tranquility. We want to have a good family life. We want to walk on this earth with comfort. We want to make sujood for Allah without any fear. We're all looking for that. But as I said, it starts from ourselves. Now, I'm going to share with you a few verses from the Quran. And from these verses, I hope that each one present here who are listening will take a cue from what Allah talks about us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The Almighty discusses, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَحْدِي قَوْلَ That whomsoever looks for the inner peace within themselves, whomsoever finds the correct pathway within themselves, whomsoever understands themselves towards getting nearer to Allah, Allah says, Yahdi qalba, I guide that heart. So that's the very first point. A very simple understanding that if we want Allah to guide our heart, we need to be correct. We need to be correct to the best of our ability, then Allah enters into that heart and Allah guides that heart. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to make a dua. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura. Imagine, the Prophet, a great personality, made this dua which we should also do. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura. Oh Allah, let there be, create 
instill your light, your love, your power in my heart. Prophet made this dua. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura. Let this light, you know, brighten up in my heart. So this is the dua we need to start with. But keep on making this dua. Oh Allah, create your light within our hearts. So there's two things. The one is to bring Allah in our heart, and the other is to enlighten our heart with the light of Allah. Then we go further, in which the Almighty discusses this very beautiful words, so that again, we can see the relationship between ourselves and our Allah, the inner relationship. We're talking about this inside, to get that correct today, so that the rest of our bodies will follow suit and become comfortable. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهِ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْئِ وَقَلْبِ Allah says that I am وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهِ I am that artery I am that vein that connects the body to the heart for who? for people who purifies themselves for people who understand themselves <coughs> For people who are looking for peace of mind. For people who want to come nearer to me. For this, Allah mentioned, when you have recognized me, I become that artery between your body and the heart. I exist in between. Isn't that person fortunate? Isn't those individuals fortunate who has Allah in that artery that joins the body to the heart? But then again, it all comes from one message, that the inside has to be pure. Now there are many ways, many, many ways in which we can purify ourselves. And that's what we need to know. There are so many ways, some of us, we have become so despondent, and we think the world has ended now, you know? I've done so much of wrong, I've let the people talk. I've done this, I've done that. You know, it goes on and on and on and we become very, very frustrated. We become frustrated to think, what are people talking about us? It happens. Because we are human. We become, you know, we become so insecure on what we hear, what we see, except it goes on and on and on. Now there's one, the most perfect and beautiful way if all of us want to enjoy. If you want to really enjoy this life, one of the very, very good ways is to find the path in how to get Allah, get nearer to Allah and seek forgiveness. Now I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share with you Hadith Al-Qudsi. And after that, if we can have any evil in our heart about anybody, then there's something major wrong with us. That heart of ours has not been purified. Hadith Al-Qudsi, Hadha Kalam in Allah. Allah speaks. And he's talking to his creation. And he says that, O oh, children of Adam alayhi salam, that's all of us present here, and those that are not here, anytime you call upon me, and you appeal to me, and you ask for help from me, I will come forward to present what you're looking for, and if you ask for forgiveness from me, I will forgive you, and I don't mind forgiving you. That's Hadith al Okay? That's the one aspect. The second aspect, Allah says that if you are mistake, this we must keep in our hearts. So that we can stop identifying human being and put in a, some kind of a title on people. You know, we like to put a title, oh, this guy is a crook. Or, you know, we, we have this very weird way of thinking. But listen to this carefully, that Allah says, if your mistake reaches the peak, the peak of the sky, from the earth up to the peak of the sky, if your mistakes are so many, and your sin is so many, and you turn to me, and you ask me for forgiveness, I will forgive you, and Allah said, I don't mind forgiving you. So we cannot be judgmental. So becoming judgmental, we have to drop it off our mind immediately. If anyone wants to be judgmental, we are going against Hadith al-Qudsi. 
One more hadith in Qudsi. Then again, Allah speaks and says, if you come to me, if you come to me full of sins, and your sins are as large as the diameter of the earth, and thereafter, you meet me in a state in which you have asked for forgiveness, I will forgive you, and I don't mind forgiving you. So these three important points conclude our entire message of who we are and what we are. Who we are? We are people of purity because we have asked for forgiveness many times and Allah has forgiven us. With the faith that Allah has forgiven us, so we are all people of purity. And where we are, we are moving nearer and nearer towards Allah all the time. As we go more deeper into understanding this, what we must know is that when we ask for forgiveness, we are communicating with Allah that we want to move away from some negative energy into something which we can recognize and meet our Rabb. That's why Allah says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Allah said, don't ever despair my mercy. Don't undermine my mercy. For that person who could have committed the greatest of sins, I have forgiven that person. So if I can forgive, don't ever undermine, don't ever find my mercy to be inferior. So we have another important aspect that to get near to Allah and to love Allah is part of this wonderful journey of mercy. Then further Allah also talks and says, وَسِعَتْ رَحْمَةِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That my mercy encompasses everything. Everything. In every heart my mercy is. Around every human being I have my mercy. And wherever, whether the war is taking place in Egypt, in Syria, in Afghanistan, my mercy is there all the time. I have my mercy there. So that is why you and I have to understand that Allah's mercy is all over. We need to share the mercy with each other. Further, friends and brothers, in order for us, in order for us to understand what this mercy is all about, what this forgiveness is all about, and how to get satisfaction within yourself, the very, very, very first point, we must learn to respect ourselves. Really. And the person who knows how to respect himself is a person who knows to make this such the on time. Yes. Any person who cannot perform the salah on time is a person who disrespects themselves. Leave disrespecting the deen of Allah. That's fine with Allah. But if we want satisfaction, and if we really want comfort, and if we really want an inner change to take place, the starting point is here, today. Learn to respect ourselves by doing things the correct way. Firstly, to perform our salah, which is compulsory upon all of us. Allah does not change conditions. Just remember, the anger of Allah descends on how we love. Allah doesn't. When we move away from Allah, Allah moves away from us. You see how homes are breaking up? Because there's no salah in the house. You look at husband and wife's problems, there's no salah in that house. There's no respect in that house. Why do you find every now and then the throne of Allah shaking because the husband decides to divorce the wife or the husband sleeps in one room, the other wife sleeps in the other room? Don't you realize the curse of Allah is descended on that home? The curse of Allah is in the house because Allah is very upset when he comes to know that these two beautiful creations I have put together and they decide to be a part of each other. So that's another important point that we need to learn to respect ourselves. I hope that this very important message of respect has touched the hearts of everyone. Then again, we must build the love of hope, of love. You know, we need to build the feeling of love within ourselves to be able to love each other. Love in a sense through respect. Love in a sense through order. Love in a sense through khidmah. Whichever way possible, we can build the, the brotherhood love, we should make sure that we move towards it. And another important point, 
Don't ever break your family ties if you want your du'as to be accepted. That's one person which Allah, <coughs> sorry, and the hadith speaks about. That any person who has broken their family ties, their du'as does not reach the angels to come to Allah. Okay? So this is what the inner change is all about for the outer satisfaction. If we're going to change our way of thinking, if we're going to purify our hearts, if we're going to move nearer to Allah with piety and taqwa, the satisfaction will come within our bodies. The satisfaction will come in our society and things will start changing in communities and societies. There are a few hadiths we're trying to share with you, but there's another hadith in Qudsi that comes to mind here. This is also something, I hope it's, I hope it's connecting to our hearts. I just pray, you, we must really get it into our hearts, you will enjoy life. You know, life is so wonderful. Life is so beautiful. To have children is a gift from Allah. And to wish to live forever also will be a blessing if we've got comfort. But if we don't have comfort, you look for every excuse. Drug ourselves, kill ourselves, do this, do Because you know why? We don't have Allah with us. So in this year, Allah says in Hadith al Qudsi, <coughs> That when my servant gets close to me, now we all need to get close to Allah, right? Then Allah promises, Inna wa'dallahi haq. Allah promises that when you get close to me, I become closer to you, and thereafter, my divine guidance take over. You know, we sometimes think, but this man here, he only seen in a masjid, and he's so comfortable. That Monisa got so many followers and all that. Maybe they've received divine guidance. And Allah's taken over. So when we move towards Allah, Allah said, I become even more closer to you. And when I become closer to you, my divine guidance takes over. Nobody can disturb you. So I think today we have a very strong dose of changing our ways. We have to. You know, one of the ways is when we perform our salah, we do it haphazard. Up, down, and out. Compared to that person who performs their salah in complete commitment, these are people whom Allah is beginning to descend His divine guidance. Why? They are talking to Allah with respect. They get in nearer to Allah. And when they raise their hand, Allah is accepting it. Because why? They found the divine guidance from Allah. Then again, the, one of the hadiths of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentions, die before you have to die. Die from all this uncalled for things we are holding on. We are holding on it before the hour comes when sudden death takes over. Then again, two, three other hadiths, a person, a person who repents, that is why what I'm trying to get to us all, if you just walk in there, that we should not become judgmental. Stop judging people. Stop calling people by titles. Stop telling, oh, you know, this person became rich because he hijacked a container, which is the famous talk we hear about loading. It's not true. It's not true. It is something we've created ourselves. This person must have worked hard. He's not going to come here and look and write on a notice board that this is the amount of stock I'm selling and this is my profit. Why should he do it? He doesn't owe it to us. They owe it to Allah. So you and I should not be judgmental. If we're going to become judgmental, then we've taken over the work of Allah. Then we want to be the rabbi. Then we want to be the false god. Now is Allah, and that's how the punishment of Allah comes. So here, Allah says, uh, the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad says, a person who repents, a person who makes istighfar, and a person who makes tawbah, such a person, Allah frees him from all kinds of sins. Imagine, you know, even a person who could have made shirk, and that person without us knowing, that person asked forgiveness from Allah. Who are you and I to call a person a mushrik? Don't become judgmental. Be people of purity. Work with the energy of good. Make such that with purity. You cannot stand, I cannot stand in front of Allah and I'm making salah while in my thought I have so much of evil thoughts about people. 
this one is like that, that one's wife is like that, and this one's son is a druggie, and I haven't seen all of them, but I talk about it. So that was the start of our talk, that don't become judgmental. If we move away from all this, Allah will give us a pure heart, and once we have a pure heart, our dua get accepted. One more hadith, that this is also hadith. The one was hadith in Qudsi where Allah spoke. <coughs> Here the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned that if, we, if you were to sin, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> if you were to sin until your sins reach the sky, this is beautiful. If you were to sin, listen carefully because we became judgmental. So here the Prophet Muhammad says, if you were to sin until your sin reached the sky and you repent thereafter, Allah will accept the repentance. One was Allah talking. Here the Prophet is speaking. On both instances, Allah accepts the forgiveness of a person. So friends, brothers, I think it's absolutely important that you and I give it a start today. Give it a very, very bold start. Don't wait for the next salah. Don't wait for the next day. Don't say from Monday I'm going to start changing. Don't say from Thursday night I will start changing. Start immediately. Anything that's delayed comes from shaitan. And anything that is active comes from Allah. So the start for today, that remember, Jum'ah is a very, very, very important salah. Just as well as all other salah. We need to guide our hearts towards this goodness. For Allah is al muhaymin al muhaymin means to be a guardian. If our heart moves towards purity, if our actions have changed, and if we start doing good, which means we share the quality of becoming the guardian towards ourselves. So here today, make sure that if we perform our salah, perform it with commitment. And through that commitment, when we make dua, Allah will accept the dua. That's the one. The other is to make sure that after the first salah, to at least perform the sunnah salah. That is something we are giving complete neg negligence to. You know, the sunnah is so important. It's all the guidance the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought to you and I that till today we still on deep. The sacrifice the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave for you and I to be where we are today, this much we can do is to fulfill his sunnah. What is his sunnah? At least to perform the two or four or four or two rakat sunnah after the first salah. And also another important aspect, make dua for ourselves. Make dua. As I told you, that if we ask for forgiveness, it will be accepted. And when there's purity, Allah will definitely accept it dua. And one more point that I'm already on one o'clock, sorry, one more. The important time of khutbah. You know you're not supposed to read salah. You know we're not supposed to talk. You can't even tell the person next to you to keep quiet, that's the one. And the other, between the two khutbas, I just double check with Sheikh again. The riwayat is very strong. That's the time in which du'as are accepted. So pray for ourselves. Why lose it? We are all having problems. During the two khutbas, the imam has a break, certain imams give you time. Make the du'a for whatever you wish. Don't be stingy. And at the same time, make du'a for the people throughout the world. May Allah guide us to the best. May Allah grant us a pure heart. May the satisfaction of good come towards us. And may Allah accept our Jum'ah. Wa akhwa da'wana. Alhamdulillah.